It's an interesting effect, isn't it? How do we get it? And what's a gobo? And just what on earth is a Cucoloris? I'm Paul Campbell. Welcome to my channel. Stick around. Let's find the answers to these questions and more. Dark and stormy night. Well, it's not really. And this is just tea. So, enough of this. Let's get on with it. Well, that was a bit of nonsense, wasn't it? Let's get serious. How are you? I hope life is treating you well. If not, you know, be sure to be easy on yourself. Now that subscribe button, you know what to do there. I don't have to tell you. Up until now, I've been shooting these videos on the old uh, Canon C100. But today, just to make life harder, I'm using my Blackmagic 6K Pro, still with the vintage uh, contact size 28mm lens. So, how do you get that Venetian blind effect? As a simple solution, you might cut out something like this. Let's try it with a bare reflector. Well, the result is not wonderful. We need to be close to the subject to get uh, anything like crisp shadows. Let's try it with a snoot. Now, the snoot doesn't actually focus light, but it does restrict it and makes it less divergent. The result is decent enough though we do have to be halfway between the light and the subject to get good shadows. Now, anything like this, it's like a cutout stencil that you put between the light and the subject, is called a cucoloris. Now these date from the 1930s or earlier. There are many ways of spelling this, doesn't matter what you use. The closer it is to the subject and the further from the light, the more distinct the shadows are going to be. In a studio with powerful lights, this can work well, but in a small space, we're going to find ourselves looking for a better solution. So bear with me while I talk about stage lighting. The lighting used in a typical stage production makes photo and video lighting look really simple. Lighting a scene can take dozens of lights on the stage. One of the lights used is the ellipsoidal reflector spot. ERS for short, sometimes called a Leco, as this was the brand of an earlier model. The design dates back to the early 30s. Now the ERS is capable of providing a sharp edged circle or oval of light on the stage. It can also provide a designed shadow, such as a window frame on the stage to simulate uh, sunlight shining through a window, for instance. or you know, very much like the effect I showed at the start of the video. Let's take a look at the design of the ERS. Now, in an earlier video, I talked about the parabolic reflector. The parabola and the ellipse are both conic sections. If a light is placed at the focus of a parabolic reflector, the light mostly emerges from it as a parallel beam, in theory anyway. Now, an ellipse has not one, but two foci. And if you place a light at the focus of an elliptical reflector, that light will be reflected through the other focus. It'll be converged to go through the other focus. Now in this diagram, we have a reflector made in the form of half an ellipse. Two foci are shown, even though half the ellipse has been removed. If a lamp is placed at the focus of the reflector, any light from it will be reflected through the other focus as shown. 
Of course, nothing is ever perfect, and uh, some light won't hit the reflector at all, and will just go straight out. Now, the ERS has three parts. The cap, which contains the lamp, the reflector, which fits somewhat over the lamp, and a lens barrel, which usually contains a pair of lenses of a type known as plano convex. That's flat on one side and convex on the other. This lens pair is designed to converge the light into a tight near parallel beam. The lens pair can be moved in the barrel to focus or defocus the light to make the beam wider or narrower. A single lens could be used uh, instead of a pair, sometimes is. Now between the reflector and the lens, roughly at the second focus point, there are shutters, usually four, which can be pushed in to shape the light. There's one at the top, one at the bottom, and one on each side. There's also a provision at this point for a gobo holder to slide in. A gobo is short for goes between optics. Cut out shapes like miniature versions of the Cucoloris can be mounted in the gobo holder and inserted in here. Now because of the position close to the focus, the shapes will be projected clearly onto whatever surface the light is aimed at. Now in fact, this design is the same as for a slide projector or for a movie projector. Now there have been several devices designed to convert a photo or video light into an ERS. The Bowens Universal Spot was one. Bowens supplied their unit to Profoto, who rebranded it and doubled the price. Now, Bowens is no longer in business, so these are no longer on the market. However, some years ago, I obtained this unit made by Newer. It's called the Newer Optical Snoot. Now, there, there are or were numerous versions of this Chinese-made device with different brand names but identical appearance. Now, overall, it's got the same structure as the uh, ERS, so the lamp is now provided by whatever strobe or continuous light it's attached to. And this is where the implementation differs. If we have a look, at this end here, this is a removable Bowens mount. Well, I can just take it off, if you bear with me for a moment. The screw has an interminable number of threads. That, uh, that can be replaced with a different kind of mount. Inside here, there is uh, a reflector. And I think you can see that behind the reflector, at the, there is a lens. A uh, lens that's convex on this side and uh, it's flat on the other. So here is the flat side of that lens. Now there's a space in here, which is where a gobo holder uh, fits. And here is the lens barrel, and that contains a pair of plano convex lenses, which can be moved in and out and fixed in place with that knob. You can see the uh, the front one there. It's got the uh, the convex part at the front, and the uh, the flat parts of the lenses are uh, mating together. Now, these glass lenses, these two here and this one, though I think this one might be plastic. I'm not sure. But these ones are definitely very heavy. This is a very heavy unit at 1.8 kilos, around four pounds. This reflector here, you know, it could be elliptical. So I've got no way of knowing, really. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it can't work as an ellipsoidal reflector because the light, the light source, is not going to be inside the reflector. So here I've attached the, uh, the Bowens mount, which I took off the reflector. I've attached it to a light. And you can see now where the light source sits in relation to the reflector. You can see it's it's right at the back of the uh, adapter. And then the adapter sits 
uh, behind the reflector, so the, the light is nowhere near the actual uh, reflector itself. Uh, it's an important or even crucial part of the design of the elliptical re uh, reflector spot that the lamp sits at the focus of the ellipsoidal reflector. And in this case, it doesn't sit anywhere near it. It's a, a, a chip-on body, COB, LED, and that's a flat light. It couldn't be placed at the focus like a traditional globe. And most of the light from the source here hits the lens, this lens at the front directly. The reflector and the reflective interior of the adapter do help to reflect the light forward, but they don't provide any focusing effect whatsoever. This is provided by that large lens. Let's see how well it works. Uh, I should show you what the uh, the gobo holder looks like. This is it. And uh, we have a number of gobos that fit into it. It fits into this space. Fits into this space here. It's uh, not a great design because there are there are three little slots that the um, gobo holder has to fit into and it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get it in place. So that's where it goes and we have a selection of gobos. The, here's the uh, gobo which I used at the start for the Venetian blind effect and uh, it fits into the gobo holder like so. And if you get it in place properly, I think it's supposed to be the other way up. All right, so we have it like so. And the, the other gobos in the selection, I'll show you what they look like in the device in a moment. We have a pair of hearts and a circle. We have a heart and a leaf. We have a circle. We have another circle and a crescent moon. Another circle and two small circles. Window frame, slit. Another window frame and yet another circle. Okay. Now I'm going to put those in the uh, spot and I'm going to cycle through them so you can see what they look like projected onto a background. Now, this is not a precision piece of equipment. It has the feel of a prototype rather than a production piece. There's a lot of distortion, and the shadow edges, the shadow edges are never really sharp. But it was fairly cheap. I can't remember the price, but certainly under $200. Now, Nanlite have an equivalent called the Nanlite projector. It costs more than twice as much, three times as much, I think. But it's probably a quality piece of kit in comparison. There are plenty of reviews of the, non, the Nanolite online, and it looks to be quite effective. But like the uh, newer, like this unit, it's large and heavy. It might even be larger. But it has its own light stand mount. So you, you put the projector on a mount and then you clip the lamp on behind it. And that takes the strain off the lamp's uh, uh, fitting. With that uh, you know, fitting on the front of the lamp is only designed to hold a, uh, a reflector, not a great big heavy piece of equipment like this. I feel quite nervous about uh, letting that cheap Jinbei light carry the weight of this optical snoot on its plastic mounts. Godox and Aperture and other brands also make similar units. Well, do you need one of these? Well, probably not. It's something you'd, uh, you'd use pretty rarely, I think. You might use it a couple of times as a novelty, 
just for effect, and then never again. I mean, mine has been sitting on the shelf for years, gathering dust. And you are, mind you, is not a particularly good implementation, and its weight being supported by the light is a problem. I really can't speak about other brands, as I haven't used them, but I suspect that the Aperture, for instance, would be a much more effective and quality unit. Now, as I said earlier, as I said earlier, I shot this particular video with the Blackmagic 6K Pro in 6K and edited it in DaVinci Resolve. The Canon C100, which I've used for all my previous videos, is probably a better tool for the job. It's much easier to use. It has easy to attach AC power. It's got full size XLR and all the ports on it are easily accessible. You've got full size XLR ports on the top handle. The uh, power uh, inlet uh, for the uh, AC adapter is just a a, uh, a socket on the outside of the camera, easy to get at. There's a HDMI, full-size HDMI port, also easy to get at. The Blackmagic's ports are an absolute nightmare to use. They're small, they're crowded together and impossible to reach independently with uh, any size of fingers above those of a toddler. Well, I'm going to do uh, a video on the 6K Pro and just talk about uh, these and uh, other problems with the camera, as well as the advantages of it, because it is a fantastic camera. So, I suggest you subscribe now, so as not to miss that video when it comes up. Well, that's it for now. I look forward to your company next time around. Goodbye, and may the gods treat you kindly. <laughs>